Chapter 2 Images of the Possible Space, nature, and leisure. Nothing can be seen above the trees' crowns. There are no parks, and everything is a forest. Human life blends within the landscape. Their buildings are simple, moderated in size, and very practical. No material is wasted with the purpose of aesthetization, but nonetheless, beauty is everywhere. Everything looks so clean, carefully composed, in order to offer a healthy environment where one can learn, experiment and enjoy life without the pressure of economic survival. Labor and production are still present within human activities. How to dissolve the borders of these worlds and spill the utopia over the world that we know. Not even the ink believes the images that it tries to sketch. Hope has been erased and no future can be foreseen outside the logic and hierarchies of today. Not that life outside labor cannot be imagined, but labor has become life, labor time has become living time. It's about putting life to work. Break has become an empty word, knowing that the reproduction of this configuration never stops. Revolutions and systemic changes are part of the realm of nostalgia. Nothing seems to escape the logic of monetary translation and profit. There is no hope for a better future for social constructions that would heal the damages of the past, that would hopefully restore the equilibrium of biological life on Earth. Is this the end? How to put an end to the inequalities across the world? How to put an end to exploitation and start distributing knowledge and wealth throughout the communities of the world? As Badiou has forcefully insisted, an effective anti-capitalism must be a rival to capital, not a reaction to it. There can be no return to pre-capitalist territorialities. Anti-capitalism must oppose capital's globalism with its own authentic universality. Where to find hope when even our utopian desires and criticality are captured and transformed into empty products, dried out of any hope of materialization of this possible future.